Hey guys, what's up? Captain Russia here. Uh, back to the test server, back to the to the hideout. Uh, so as you can see here, this hideout has upgraded to tier two. We've got some cool doors looking here. It looks more like a little underground castle. Um, I placed some uh, furniture around here too. It's kind of cool. Uh, you can see the lift area looks a little bit different too. And of course, we got additional like three mini spaces, so five lots each. So 15 additional um, building blocks have been added. So that's cool. That's what you get with hideout level two. Um, you can see it here, hideout level two on our uh, management board. And it's actually now upgrading to level three. So it'll be done in, in about three hours. Um, so we also got the auction house here, pretty standard, kind of like on a guild island. Uh, this is awesome. Um, Everything else in the middle is pretty much unchanged, but let me do a quick, uh, quick kind of run through to show you, um, you know, all the different areas that got added. So they they have a bit of like different uh, design to them, which I which I really like. So the original area, you know, didn't change much, um, didn't change at all. The second area looks kind of cool. It's kind of like keeper, watery waterfall kind of looking. It's one of the deeper uh, areas. Um, one more cool thing that I noticed. So when you upgrade uh, your buildings, uh, they now have these little like animated signs or, or color-coded signs. So tier 2 kind of looks like, I don't know, grayish color, I guess. Right? Um, same thing here. Tier 3 looks green. Right? So that's kind of cool. And then a tier 4 looks blue, right? Because 4 is blue, and I would imagine 5 would look red, and then yellow, and then white to, to tier 8. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this is like the little underground area, the second slot. Oh, and this is where we also get our uh, farming merchant. And, and just to be clear, and it has like the furniture and all that stuff, just to be clear, it does not, the hideout does not come with farming plots, because that would kind of defeat the whole purpose of you having to transport food you know either from your farm plots in the black zones or from the city uh, because the hideouts should not be completely self-sustainable I mean that's that's the whole idea of, of, of Albion if you watch the you know any of the Albion trailers you see that there's always a necessity to transport goods right for, for whatever reason from one one area to another so this is how it works uh, no farms sorry guys so I just built a house, you know, just some other items. So this is the second area. Um, again, pretty spacious. I mean, kind of looks like typical underground stuff. I planted some trees here. And then as we go up to the final one, this one is kind of like the the higher area. It was like a little like bluff overlooks, I guess. Um, little kind of tunnel holes. So yeah, that's... That's the last area, and I'm assuming once we upgrade to uh, tier three, you know, this tunnel will open up and it will connect us all the way with the tunnel that's that's in the beginning um, at the very entrance. Yeah, it was this tunnel. And also, let me quickly show. Uh, the way hideout looks on the outside also changed. So it looks bigger and actually has, uh, I think, like more guild logo displays. And it actually looks like it has more like stone around it and stuff. Thicker walls. And again, if we ride away, we lose the bubble and it kind of goes down and then it opens up as we get closer. Also, quick note for people wondering, where do you see uh, the tribute paid? So if you go to your uh, account tab for the guild and you look at the guild logs, silver logs, and you look for, you know, whatever uh, time frame. So you can see here, if you remember in my previous uh, episode, I, I set up a small tribute just to test at 100 silver. And it gets paid, um, no, it gets paid at the beginning of the territory's um, prime time. So in this case, 3 UTC. And so we paid it um, on the 15th, and then we paid it on the 16th to a different owner of the tower. And now 
so again right up top at three uh at three utc and now since we're the owners of the of the zone of the tower you know we're not obviously paying tribute to ourselves uh yeah right here but that's all i wanted to show you guys oh and this looks different too this looks like tier two now different icon on on the big map yeah anyway i just wanted to show how how tribute you know looks i, I showed how to set up a payment and this is how the uh the payment looks in the accounting tab all right, and here I want to show you guys how the new territories, the new tower works. Um, again, you can add tabs same way as you can in the, in, in the current tower. Um, here we see the Crystal League. So that's how you upgrade your tower using the tokens. Um, again, I already showed this before, 700 IP cap for level 1. And you can plug it in and start your crystal battle from this tower and it would upgrade it um, to a higher level basically. And you can see up top where it says level 1, you can go all the way to, I think, level 10. Um, so yeah, and here again are the rewards, um, depending on, you know, what level you upgrade the tower to. One more cool thing I wanted to show is there's the Sentry Mage here, so this is, this is different, and it looks like it has like 60k health. So it's going to be interesting trying to fight over on the territories, because it looks like you get this like one big kind of boss type of uh, NPC, you know, helping you protect the territory. And the territories themselves, as you can see, guys, look different. I mean, here's where the mages are by this little crystal thing. And it looks like a mini castle. You see this, like, castle wall that I'm running along? So basically, it's going to be pretty tricky. It's like a little tunnel that you have to go through to get to the center. And there's a lot of little choke points and, like, defense points and stuff where, you know, ranged characters can attack from. So it's definitely going to be interesting uh, to see how it plays out. All right, going back to our hideout. So actually I logged in on the next day and now our hideout, you can see it looks different. It actually finished upgrading to a level three. So once we get in, we'll see our new hideout. Looks different. Looks different on the map as well. And we can see it's level three with five shields currently. Okay, cool. Different doors. And I also, again, I let's let's do a quick run through um, through the NPCs. We got a vanity merchant. We got a artifact foundry um, repair station's always been there. So this is kind of cool. So let's see let's see what else uh, changed here from the level three. Again, so here is our uh, energy manipulator. We can make siege mounts, which is which is cool. So you can produce them basically inside. Here's all, all the tabs where we can make upgrades to runes, so that's pretty awesome. And we also have um, the Crystal League, so we you can queue up to the Crystal uh, Realm fights from inside the hideout, of course, once, once you get it to level 3. So that's cool. Again, works just the same way. Let's check out the uh, artifact foundry again. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same one we have in in the city. Here are the new artifacts for the new Avalonian armor. So again, this is kind of cool. We basically can, you know, roll your, roll your artifacts, upgrade things without leaving your hideout. So you don't really need to go to the Royal Continent. You can upgrade your maps. You can do pretty much anything you can do in a city. You can do it all here in the hideout. And here's uh, here's the map upgrade. That's the new feature that's coming up, and we got maps all the way to tier eight, of course. All right, so let me do sort of a quick uh, run through. Oh yeah, here's one more NPC. You know, that's for your hardcore expeditions. So you can actually queue up all the way, like you can in the city. You can queue up to the hardcore expeditions or any expedition solo or group from the hideout as well. Kind of like a pastime, I guess. So let me just run through quickly again through the new uh, newly added areas. Um, the previous ones from level one and level two are pretty much, you know, they don't change, they stay the same. But here I'm about to enter the new area, f you know, that got added with the level three hideout. This actually looks really, really awesome. Like kudos to whoever on the development team like made this. I like the waterfall 
looks like you can actually fish a little bit from uh, from this little ledge, and it, and it looks pretty looks pretty awesome. This is giving me like dungeon keeper vibes. I want to just get a bunch of minions in here and you know build a torture chamber. <laughs> it would be awesome. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we got a bunch of like steps, a pretty cool looking design in this big room. That's that's for the guild hall. And then we approach another area with five uh, building slots that looks like I don't know. Maybe there's maybe there's another expansion planned in the future for that little doorway that I just passed through. Anyway, this is this is how this looks. Really cool. A lot of different kind of drops and like water water looking area, waterfall areas. I'm actually gonna drop a uh, guild hole in here. Again, this is this is gonna be really awesome. I mean, it kind of gives that you know sense of like achievement ownership to the guild that you can build your own guild hole inside. All right, and that's that's pretty much it for for the level three hideout. Let's jump on to trying to attack an enemy hideout. So as you can see, it's only vulnerable for about 20 minutes. So I got 18 minutes left to attack a level two hideout that has three shields remaining. And let's see what I can actually do. I, I brought a T8 hammer. And it doesn't really look like I can do much damage. You can see the, the regeneration is kicking in. And basically, I can't even break the regen. It's staying at like 99%. You can see it on the map when it's being attacked. I'm going to whack it for a little bit more just to see if I can break that regen, but it looks like that's a no-go. Yep. So, okay, so it looks like there is, there is definitely a damage threshold that you need to break to be able to destroy a hideout. Again, I'm using a tier 8 demolition hammer. The only thing that's better is, you know, if you use a, a Valonian hammer, but those are kind of expensive. Alright, so I'm going to bring a second teammate, uh, you know, second guildmate, and we're going to try to whack it for a little bit and see if that works. And again, as we can see, the you know, it's staying at 99, and, and it's it's pretty difficult to, to break that regen. Uh, so even with two people using two tier 8 demolition hammers, uh, it's pretty much impossible to to take down a hideout. I think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change our passives in the leather to uh, attack speed, and then it's finally gonna start to uh, to drop in health a little bit, like you know, tiny bit, one percent at a time, basically. And remember, the clock is ticking. We got like one minute remaining to try and break it. In the bottom right corner, right, you can see it's 0319 UTC. So there's no way we're going to be able to do any kind of damage whatsoever to this hideout within the 20 minute span. Maybe we'll get it down like 5 or 6%. Yep, and here's the shield that pops up. The 20 minute timer is out and it becomes invulnerable for another 23 hours. Yep, so that's it guys. I mean, it's not that easy to break, to break a hideout. Anyway, that's going to be it for the video. Thanks, guys, you know, for watching. Uh, if you like it, please hit me with a like and subscribe if you want to support the channel. And I'll see you guys again in the next video. Captain Russia, out.